Los Angeles Clippers. Mm. Eighth seed, seed in the West now. They're the eighth seed. I mean, my goodness, yeah. man. They're 0-5 since acquiring Russell Westbrook. <laughs> and, yeah, and, man, yeah. okay. you know, I, I think, Riv, you're the Clippers guy, but I want to let Drew go first here. Oh, thanks, man. Because, you know, he had to deal with Russell Westbrook and was – I guess like on and off about him. I'm not, I'm not sure where he really lied with Russ too I was much. loyal. I was loyal. Loyal. This is the word. I never fault. wanted to disrespect him. True or false. But now that he's on the opposite team, I mean, what do you see? Fuck him. I don't love the Clippers, not by any means. I'd go as far as to say as I don't Here fuck with them, not even a little bit. That being said, I still won't shit on Russell. He hasn't been playing bad, honestly. He's no, he turned hasn't. the ball over a ton. Yep. But no. that's just what you get out of Russell Westbrook. That's not a. Uh, I'm not trying to throw a knock on him. It's just truth. He's just a turnover ball. He turns over the ball a decent amount. But he's still been playing pretty well. The issue with the Clippers of recent has been their lineups. And Riv probably will go more in depth into it because he calls Ty Lue one of the best coaches in the league. He's gone to bat for him consistently. And even he can acknowledge that Ty Lue right now is playing games. And at this point in time of the season, you can't afford to play games. With how tight the West is, and the fact that you went from the fourth seed, dropped all the way down to the eighth seed, because you've gone on a five-game skid, it, we can't just look at here and say, oh, is it coincidence that Russell Westbrook comes into the team and, and suddenly they start losing games? But that's not necessarily the case. You can understand that, yes, they do have a guard issue, and that's a reason why, out of necessity, Russell Westbrook has been playing such a substantial amount of minutes. But you still see Eric Gordon playing minutes and being horrendous. Miles Plumley is just a weird fit. You already had Miles Plumley in in Zubac, and Zubac has been playing very well for you. I understand that Plumley uh, uh, provides a little bit more playmaking. Still, yeah. Ah, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's why. I was How long has he been out for? Curious. So ironically enough, Zubac doesn't play. On five skid. Is Zubac the is Zubac the major key? Zubac on the man. Put your mouth on it. What? What? Put your mouth on the mic. Oh, Zubac's underrated. Oh god, yeah. There's, there's no now. way you worded it like no, that. No, <laughs> Zubac is underrated. Yeah, and I've underrated. said it since he left the, the Lakers as well. I've been well, very been upset fine. as a move. Oh, my Plumley god. has been fine, but I just Plumley's been solid. Probably the best acquisition. For the Clippers. No. No, no, no. no. It's not. not. He's been Westbrook. He's been garbage. Westbrook With really... Ha- no, you're not... R- he's not lying. The, Westbrook the really has been good. Ball. I'll let Drew go okay. and not cook. The, the one thing that is still remains consistent is that they continue to disrespect him at the three-point line. The video that was shown and, and, and made Draymond, fun of baby. was Draymond just chilling right at the basket, allowing Russell to have... Feet of space at the three-point line because he understands that Westbrook is just not a threat to shoot the ball like that. But at the minimum, you can understand that Westbrook is going to continue to push the tempo, which is what I liked when he was on the Lakers. They played a fast-paced game. He gets down the court. He gets out in transition. And he still knows how to initiate an offense. It sucks that he can't shoot. And that is an issue that the Clippers will have to face. They're already not the best three-point shooting team. They're a decent three-point shooting team, sure. But now you add Westbrook into the mix who plays substantial minutes. Then it's that's when things start to become an issue. But Riv's 100% right. Westbrook has been the best acquisition of the the four, I guess, with with Gordon, with Bones, with Plumlee, and now Westbrook. I just didn't. I think that when Zubac comes in, it'll be hard. Of course, Plumlee will get bench minutes, rightfully so. But I just can't see Plumlee playing substantial minutes when Zubac does essentially everything that he does. In my opinion, I'd rather Zubac. He's been in the season a little bit. The He's been with the team for longer. He, he understands the system better than, than Plumlee does. Plumlee just adds a little bit more passing. But what does that really matter, really? It doesn't. Not to me, at least. Oh, you know, it's been interesting. I think Ty Lue, I've gone to bat for him for so long. And then do, do right. He's been uh, blessing my, you know, he's been blessing my praise. You know, he's been doing a good job prior to this year, uh, going to the WCF, making those key adjustments and playoff situations team is down he rallies them up so he's been a uh, in the last year you know not having his stars and still being able to put up a fight throughout the year so he's been he's been good if, uh, like he's been fitting my praise but right now he's on fraud watch I think the whole Clippers is on fraud watch and not Kawhi I won't sit here and blame Kawhi because Kawhi has been as good as psh, the old Kawhi you know as of lately he's been on that elite tear offensively but I think the problem stem from a, a multitude of things, lineup situations. You know, Talu has yet to figure out a good lineup. 
He's yet to figure out the perfect time to sub guys in, some guys out. And it's really showed in these last couple games. I mean, you can go back to that Kings game, that historic game. He subbed it. PG had an opportunity to come in. They could have probably closed that game. Well, even before that, they blew a bunch of leads, kept letting the Kings get back in it with turnovers, turnovers. And then if you turn the ball over against the Kings, they are going to make you pay. They are a high-scoring offense. Dumb mistake. It happened twice hilariously, but that game – you had a chance to, to end the game if you put PG back in, but because of minutes restriction after 40 minutes, not only do you make the wrong sub, you put in Eric Gordon, who fouls back-to-back right after that, and then you keep Plumlee in, who turns the ball over damn near every single play. Lineup situation. Then, against Denver, you know, you have Morrison, PG in. They're turning the ball over. You plug in AG in at the wrong time. Joker, Jamal Murray, feasting. Lineup situations, turnovers. Then last night's game. You were down 12 in the fourth. You make a quick rally. It looks like you're in it. Why did they lose? Well, one of the reasons they lose the game, turnover, big turnover. Westbrook, the ball just goes right out of his hands. I think the Clippers have a bunch of guys, and Ty Lue's using the wrong guys. You know, Roku should have been had some minutes. Um, T-Man should be a, a already certified guy in the lineup. The fact that he keeps getting these inefficient minutes is insane to me. Um, Ty Lue needs to figure it out, figure it out fast. You know, it's March. The lineups are an issue. Westbrook hasn't been bad, but the defense was always a concern. The turnovers, you know, you're just going to get that. But last night he was really good. You know, he was saving them and a lot, especially when they were double teaming, triple teaming PG. Westbrook was the guy that's keeping them in the game. So that's what you want to see, you know, and that Draymond stuff, Draymond was right. You, you got to shoot regardless if you, like, you have to have confidence you're going to make every shot. And regardless if the numbers aren't helping you, you have to make the defense wor- worry. You have to keep the defense on edge. If you're not going to ever shoot that, and granted, against that Warriors in that Warriors game in the first half, even though Dreamo was playing like that, he was still making some good passes, you know, making some good plays. But you have to keep the defense honest. So Eric Gordon hasn't been good. Bones Highland sucks. Um, he really isn't good. At Plumlee, all. he's not good, but. He was all right last night, you know. Uh, in, so, in some moments, he was taking some bonus to the rack. He was making some good plays. He just never looks at the rim when he's right there. He could easily had 20 points last night if he just looked at the rim one time. He'd just take a little floater. But um, this Clippers team is just – it's aggravating. It's exhausting. It's pretty annoying because it's the same shit over and over again. If it's not injuries, it's lineups. If it's not lineups, it's turnovers. If it's not turnovers, it's some guys are just not figuring out. And it's coming to the point where, yeah, do you want to have faith because they have the talent? Sure. But at what point, when are you going to look at it and just be like, they just are not going to have it figured out in time for the playoffs? These are, guys, these are all vets. These aren't young guys. You know, it's one thing if this was like fucking um, Boston, right? Like you guys are a bunch of young guys, and this is at this point you're not figuring out. You can be like, oh, they're young, right? They're not young. PG's a vet. He's been to the ECF, WCF. Kawhi's a champion. You know, Marcus Morris is a vet. Like, these guys, Nic- Nicholas Batum, vet. Roko's been in dog fights. He's a vet. Zubak's a vet at this point. Zubak is, is a vet to a degree. Like, Ty Lu is a vet. Like, these are vets. We have a vet coach, vet players. So, at some point, you just got to get tired of the excuses. I won't, though, because I'm a PG fan. But at some point, you just get, get tired of the excuses. And I don't see a reality where this team – I heard it. I don't see a reality where this team, yeah, where this team is just like they can just figure it out by April. Like April's in a month. Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd admit if I farted. Playoffs are around the corner. Yeah. No, yeah, exactly. And it's like, do they Ravs, favor a lot of matchups? It's yeah, but yeah, it's tough. No, Rivs teams are going down like bowling pins. No, the Warriors, Warriors are up. It's been a swing of emotions in the last thirty no, minutes. The, the, the Warriors are the last has one. been great. First of all, the Warriors and Cavs are up. No disrespect. Well, you know, we beat you guys finally. Yeah. Finally, finally, finally. We almost, you almost choked at the end. Almost. How many teams does Riv have? Like nine? Give or take. Three there's, of them were never like, in the race. But I was going to say, there's only like one that really matters. There's the two Warriors. left for him. Cavs still. Three of them were in the race. Come on, Detroit. Detroit. It's crazy how Detroit. picking 33% Thunder. of the league to root for and you not coming out on top is crazy. Bro. Well, you have Minnesota. I, don't, I think shit. that's not as bad as waiting until it's going on and just saying anybody but the Celtics in the East and then picking Denver and the Suns in the West. I feel like that's just you, as bad. You pick better teams what? than me. You pick better teams than me, facts. I don't even know what you said. And then in the NFL, it's Burrow and Mahomes. That's Ooh. pretty bad, too. I The Burrow take was... Ben had that. Thing. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. I was about ben to cook me because I'm a sure. Detroit fan. We but never yeah, had like, a chase. Yeah. Yeah, come on. Sorry. Detroit. I don't know what he's talking about. Like, I, think okay, it's, I think it's more okay to be maybe like Warriors, Clippers than Denver and the Suns. You just became that, right? I was yeah, the no, net, ju- I was, I Suns, was rocking yeah. with the Nets, though. I, I'm Suns because yeah, KD once said Suns. No, you left. But just, but then, like, no, 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 wait. 30 minutes ago you said that. You left. You, you stayed with the Nets. You left. Then you came back. 
Bro, let's, let's Zari, back to who? Zari, the just, Nets. Zari just donated 50 bucks saying the Warriors suck. That's because she owed me $5 because her clown ass last night tried to say we were going to lose that game. And they won. She just gave you 50 so. <laughs> yeah. she paid Shout back. out to Zari. Yeah. Um, no, but look. You left For once, I'm a Knicks fan, so let's, let's stop disrespecting my goddamn fandom, Dallas. <laughs> God damn it. You make me sick. My bad, bro. My the bad. Kings are up. The Kings are up. Yep. Crazy great prediction. King. Minnesota's not up. Jalen Brunson's up. Minnesota's not up, but you know what? I'll save what I'm going to say for this week in the NBA. Save my shit. And the Suns, the Suns, you just jumped on it, so it doesn't count. Uh, That's because KD went there, bro. And yeah. also the Suns. I was on Mikael Bridges before he got traded. That has nothing to do with the team. And I... I and I had a I had a segment on my podcast with John talking about how the Suns might be overlooked. You know, I, I thought the Suns Who's were overlooking the wait, I'm sorry, before KD. Weren't you before okay, KD? Weren't you bad. one of the reasons I said they couldn't go to the finals? I think we all said they couldn't go to the finals. No, I I, th- I said that um I thought they were gonna be a playing team to begin the year. Yeah. Obviously was that. wrong on that. Um and looking at Mikel's offense development, D book coming back, the Suns were the first seed in the West before Devin Booker went down. Yeah. And I thought people were overlooking the Suns. So, I mean, I'm only rocking with the Suns because, well, my girlfriend's a Suns fan, diehard. And also, KD's there. It's so convenient. Yeah, it's, you know, sorry, man. I can't lose. I'm sorry. The the, the great team just. Lose. I'm sorry. The great team. needed to find any way to be a Suns fan. So bro, I'm like, sorry. Okay. I'm sorry the great team just gravitates Suns towards girlfriend. me. They, they see me and they like, listen, I want him to root for me. You don't got no That's real grinds, man. Except yeah. Minnesota. And real Kings. grinds. I give you Kings, Kings and Minnesota. Is a real Facts. Grind. Kings is real grinds. Yeah, I'll give you those two. Um, the rest you, ain't real grinds. You want to talk about the Clippers or you want me to? I got some things to say. All right, let's hear it. It's going to be very quick. Russell Westbrook is the best addition by default. Plumlee hasn't been good. Eric Gordon has been awful. And Bones Holland is in play. Russ does some good things. He pushes the pace, but I think that Playing him in certain lineups just doesn't work, especially non-spacing lineups. Him and Plumlee have been all right, though. I just go back to this one statement. How crazy is it to bring in a new starting point guard to your team with a quarter of the season left and expect to win a championship? I mean, no other choice. I don't know how to feel about that statement because if Mike Conley were the addition, would you feel this way? I would have to see Mike Conley play. The Mike Conley I'm seeing in Minnesota right now, no, I would not. I, I'd feel that they pretend are still. Okay. Yeah, I think Mike Conley has, hasn't been. He hasn't he's, been a great He's been all right. In hindsight. He's all right. Yeah, that makes sense. He's, he's all right. That's true. But I just look at the Westbrook edition. You could have acquired Westbrook without starting him. I think Terrence Mann could have kept the starting job, and you have Westbrook come off the bench. He was already coming off the bench in L.A., and you just, you just come off the bench with shooters. Russ, Norman Powell, Batum, Rocco. Please play Rocco. Just come off the bench with shooters. Let Russ run the show. That's it. That's all you got to do. But instead, they started him, and I think that ruined the momentum they had with Man, PG, and Kawhi as a trio. And it just feels like right now there's a huge experiment experimentation stage for the Clippers. Long and time. Tyron Lue has to get his rotations right before the playoffs. That's really it. I, I have these stats here. The Clippers are plus 13.3 with Man, PG, Kawhi, Morris, and Zubach. Per 100, per 100 possessions. They're minus 26.3 with Westbrook, PG, Kawhi, Morris, and Plumlee. They're the, plus the Warriors two, game. Yeah, they're plus 2.2 with Russ, PG, Kawhi, Morris, and Zubats. So when Zubats plays, this is actually a positive lineup. Plumlee has really been horrible for the Clippers. Zubac is good. Love Zubac. Very good. I, I think that if the Clippers, their ideal lineup is to not start Russell Westbrook, have him come off the bench with shooters, and that's their best chance for success. But I think that in theory, we look at the Clippers and think they have a bunch of 3 and D players when they don't. Norman Powell can't play defense. Russell Westbrook can't play defense. He's a liability defensively. Russell's on ball isn't bad. His off ball is horrendous. He's all right on ball. He yeah. doesn't know how to guard pick and rolls, and he's that's not true. a point, point of attack. He lets defender. you blow by you, and then he uh, thinks he's going to get the steal. Yeah, that's facts. You're right about that. Marcus Morris is not a good defender. Their best defender, in my opinion, in terms of their wings – not the I'm not talking about the stars like okay. the role players. It's not Paul George. Was Rocco? I thought Rocco. Really? He's not. Sorry, uh, I just want to. He's their not the best. Best, perim, he's not the best perimeter. He's their best all around defender. That, okay, that's what I was saying. He can defend the rim. Multi- he can guard multiple uh-huh. positions. But their best perimeter is Roku and T Man, in my opinion. Okay. Like Ro- Rocco has not gotten minutes until until last night, and I just don't understand why. So I think in theory they have a lot of these good three and D players, but half of them can't play defense anymore, and they're really inconsistent shooters. So for me, I think that the idea of the Clippers and what they what they were going to be has gone, and I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the front office getting jittery and thinking they have to make a move. 
it feels like the Clippers are that one team that they always panic. They always panic and, and make a make a trade. They they make a trade to try to fix everything, and that could be Steve Ballmer because we know how eccentric he is as an owner. He could be forcing their hand and going to get a Westbrook and going to get these players that they don't really need. I mean, Paul George wanted him. Yeah, I mean they they brought in four players. Three of them are not are negatives. You know, I don't think they did the due diligence, due diligence on that. I just think that they've rushed a lot of these players that they've brought in, and ultimately, you need chemistry to win a championship. The Nuggets don't have the most star power, but they have great chemistry, great coach. They win because of that. The Clippers feel like they just don't build up build up enough continuity, and that's why they struggle so much. The reason why I said Plumlee, not that he's been great by any means, is Westbrook is just a roller coaster, right? And I know all of his turnovers aren't his fault. But when if he's going to play this amount of minutes, if he's going to be a starter and he's going to be closing lineups, you can't have someone who's that terrible off-ball defensively and someone who just straight-up cannot shoot the ball. That's the reason why I said Plumlee, even though he has not been great, I would say is the best addition. But I understand Westbrook does bring some positives. I don't want to sit here and shit on Westbrook because he's not the reason why they've been losing all of these games, right? It's, it's been a team effort. Sometimes he doesn't even play to close the lineup. So True. You yeah, it's, it's been, there's been some some games he has closed. Like, and the some Kings ones, you haven't. can't blame him for that. You yeah. can't seriously blame um, him for that. There's a few problems around the Clippers. Uh, Riv has mentioned it throughout the season. I think one of the biggest ones, you can't close out games, right? These During this uh, losing streak, you blew three double-digit leads, 14, 12, and 12 to the Kings, Nuggets, and Warriors. Those are all teams who are in the playoffs, potentially a round one matchup. So if you're not able to close it out in the regular season when you're up double digits, I don't feel positive about you guys in the playoffs in a seven-game series because that's going to be even more intense um, and even more pressure on you. So you have that leniency in the regular season to get up big, can't close it out there. Um, Part of it, I think, is still working out some of these new pieces some some of them have worked better than others. I mean, Bowen Thailand, like we said, doesn't really play. Eric Gordon has been terrible. I don't think Plumlee has been awful. He hasn't been great. Um, and then Russell Westbrook, who I mentioned, is kind of really up and down. That's just Westbrook, who he is right now. And before the All-Star break, things were working, right? Before you went into that, you won 10 out of your last 14. There was, obviously, you always want to make upgrades. In theory, it should always work out in the long run. But you do see that, especially towards the end of the season, because we think of the trade deadline and the All-Star break as the midseason point when it's not. It's like 70% done with the season, 75%, and you really only have 20, 25 games to get things right. So with such a small time frame and still trying to now fight for a playoff spot, no longer you're no longer solidified, that makes things even more difficult. Another issue defensively has been... Defense has been one of the bigger issues, I should say. You allow 176 points to the Kings. I'll give you that outlier game. 134 to Denver, 120 to the Kings again. Over this five-game stretch, they were 26th in defensive rating and net rating. And then lastly, turn the ball over. Before the All-Star break, when you guys were winning these games, your turnovers were marginal. You had a couple games, double-digit turnovers, but you also had a lot of wins where you would turn the ball over 10 or less times. In the last five games, I keep referencing the stretch where you guys are losing. You're averaging 17 turnovers per game. A couple of the outliers, you had two games of 20-plus turnovers, so that skews it a little bit. But even still, last night, you guys clean up the, the turnovers, and then you get out-rebounded 45-32 to 32 by the Kings. So like you said to start your your monologue, if it's not one thing, it's something out with the Clippers. I sold my stock on them towards the beginning of the season. It was more so due to the injury. But I think even now, not even talking about injuries, we have everybody on the court. We have your best players available, and it's still not working for a plethora of reasons, just of on-the-court issues. So it's something that is hard to see a solution for, at least this season. This offseason is going to be very interesting for the Clippers. They're going to have a lot of decisions to make because it's been year after year after year running back with this core with Paul George and Kawhi Leonard and Ty Lue there. So this is going to be, you know, an offseason. We could see things get shaked up. And and who knows? Maybe they, they, they can turn year around. Left their deal. And that could be, you know, more appealing to trade them now in the offseason and hope whatever team gets a rental and can convince them to stay long term than trade at the deadline. I don't think they trade Kawhi. Paul Obviously. George is more likely to be trained than Kawhi. Because I think yeah. Kawhi, remember when he left Toronto, it wasn't basketball purposes. He just wanted to be close to his family, play for his home town. Like he don't, I don't think he, I did think he wants to play ball. So I think he's, PG's probably the more likely one to get traded. But I could see a world Kawhi stays size and extension is just like lives out his life. Like, I just yeah, want to play ball, have Kawhi's fun. a unique superstar. Yeah. So I'm just like, yeah, I want to play ball, have fun, go home. Yeah.